give some thought to our short catches and question today. It's number 26. And it touches on a uh, third aspect of Christ's mediatorial office as the Christ. He is our prophet, priest, and today we'll consider his office as our king. So the question reads, how does Christ execute the office of a king? The answer is Christ executed the office of a king in, in subduing us to himself, in ruling and defending us, and in restraining and conquering all his and our enemies. It is a great comfort for the church to know that we have a king in Zion, one who has ascended into the heavens, who is worshipped by the elders of the church above in glory, and whose name is above every name, before whom one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. This is Jesus, the Christ. He came into this world born of a virgin, born in lowly circumstances, but born in the family of David. David. And so he was of the royal line of David, and he had come in fulfillment of God's promises to be not only our great prophet and priest, but also the king of the church. When he begins his earthly ministry, he proclaims that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so right from the very start, his exercise of dominion is revealed uh, over all things. He is the great king, and he is the ruler of the kingdom of God that has come into this world. He comes in humility uh, in the beginning. You recall that as he rose to Jerusalem, that final uh, Passion Week, he mounted the bow of the donkey and uh, rode up to Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna uh, to the son of David. There were great expectations uh, revolving around him and his earthly reign. Unfortunately, many of those expectations were more political in nature, nationalistic, rather than understanding the spiritual nature of his kingdom. And so Jerusalem, that was amazed and gathered to receive this, this man from Nazareth, uh, would soon, uh, at the end of the week, be crying out, crucify him, crucify him. Indeed, uh, Pilate would place upon his cross uh, the title for his crime, uh, this is the king of the Jews. And so the uh, royal office of Jesus uh, was apparent throughout his earthly ministry. Uh, he is the king. And his king was manifested, and his kingship was manifested in a variety of ways, the way that he cast out demons, the way that he healed his people, uh, the authority of his word by which he spoke, he was indeed the king. Upon his resurrection from the grave, however, he is endowed with all authority in heaven and on earth. This is uh, some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples before he ascended into heaven. All authority has been given to him. And so he ascends into heaven to the right hand of the Father, and there he reigns from heaven above every name that is named here on earth. And so Jesus is the great king of his church, and he continues to exercise that office in glory today. And we see him uh, reigning over his church from the time of his ascension until the time of his return in glory. So those who look for a special revelation of his kingdom at the end of the history of time, perhaps in a millennium, whether it is through the gradual uh, evolving of uh, world history, such that the church expands around the world and becomes a world power, and nations are Christianized, if you're looking for that kind of kingdom in the future, or if you're looking for some return of Christ and rapture of the church and establishment of an earthly kingdom in Jerusalem, you're missing out on the fact that Jesus is king now and already. That his kingship began with his ascension to the throne of God in heaven above. And so that kingdom is already in place. How does he exercise that kingly rule? Well, in subduing us to himself. 
That language is purposeful. It reminds us that we were in rebellion against King Jesus. We are, were enemies in hostile territory. Jesus spoke about the strong man who must come and plunder. Uh, the, the, how he must come and plunder the strong man's house and deliver his people. And Jesus is the one who has bound the strong man, Satan himself, so that he might rescue his people out of his kingdom. And we ourselves need to have our resistance subdued. Indeed, our hearts changed and made new so that we receive him as our king and yield our lives over to him. That's another aspect of uh, our submission to Christ. Throughout the course of life, we live as servants of the great king. We are in subjection to his reign over us. So the kingship or the lordship of Christ begins with our conversion, begins with our uh, coming to saving faith in Christ. It does not wait for a future time after we've accept, accepted Him as Savior, and then at a future point we accept Him as Lord and really begin to live the Christian life. Now, if you are a Christian and you call upon the name of the Lord, at that point in time you yield your life over to Christ and seek to serve Him. He is your King, your Lord, at that very moment. And throughout your life, He remains your King. If you're not submitting to Christ, your verbal profession of faith is of no value. It's of no meaning. Faith in Christ implies you have yielded your life over to Him and you're going to serve Him. And so Christ subdues us. He also uh, rules and defends us. And so He gives us His Word to guide us in life. His statutes, His laws are given to us in Scripture. Uh, he expects us to obey Him. And as he is our king, that we owe him fidelity to his rule and dominion over us. He defends us from evil, from Satan, from this world. In another image, he is described as our good shepherd who preserves his church. He keeps us in his strong hands, and no one can snatch us out of his hand. He is the great king who defends his church and protects us from all evil. And as well, his exercise of dominion is not only over his church, but over the whole earth, even over the wicked. He restrains their wickedness, not allowing them to give vent to their full wickedness as they would like, and he conquers his enemies. His justice is exercised every day. The wages of sin is death. And every day we see the toll of those go lost into an eternity under the wrath of God in judgment for their sin. King Jesus currently exercises his rule in the death of each person. Indeed, in the plagues that we suffer, in uh, famines, all kinds of things, Jesus exercises his dominion and his reign in punishing sin, in restraining the wicked, and sanctifying his church. And all this will come to a conclusion when he comes again in glory and establishes his earthly kingdom for an eternity, separating the sheep from the goats, sending the wicked into eternal hell, and the righteous into his eternal kingdom, where we will live for him and serve him perfectly forever and ever. Jesus is our king and always will be, and it's our delight to acknowledge him as such and to serve him.